eight hours to prevent Europe from going to war. Uh, what is on the, the Prime Minister's agenda and indeed the government's agenda this week to try and broaden that Western alliance and persuade Russia to step back? Well, exactly that. I mean, I think that there are two concurrent jobs of work underway diplomatically. The first is in uh, achieving the conversation with Russia and supporting Ukraine, having a conversation with Russia that uh, hopes to find a diplomatic solution to uh, the crisis we're in. And the second job of work is getting around uh, Western allies to make sure that uh, the international resolve is there so that if the worst does happen, that the package of economic sanctions that are imposed on Russia thereafter are as severe as they can possibly be. Minister, do you concur with US intelligence, as in Wednesday would be a, a perfect day for a Russian invasion? Look, it, it's difficult because I suspect that well, you, you know and your viewers will know that I read and see uh, lots of intelligence and so it's probably inappropriate for me to uh, comment, even though it appears that some intelligence has been declassified and briefed publicly. What I will say is that on open source, you can see it on Twitter and TikTok all the time, uh, there is footage of heavy Russian uh, machinery armaments being moved to the Ukrainian border. There's open source satellite imagery of uh, large formations, over 130,000 troops on the border, plus uh, troops on amphibious shipping in the Black Sea, plus a very large combat air force and all of the key enablers that would be needed. So exactly what day this may or may not happen uh, is immaterial. What matters is that the conditions are now set whereby a attack could be launched with no notice. And that's why the travel advice has changed. And if you may, Eamon, I'll just use the opportunity to say again, that if you are a British citizen in Ukraine, you should leave immediately. There may be no opportunity to give you any further warning.